Wait a second. That's the old intro. Let's make a new one. Alright guys, so the first thing I'm going to do is start off by making a new song for the video intro. I do have a MIDI controller keyboard. I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use some Apple loops just to make this quick. So I'm going to go to Logic Pro X and um, new from template. I'm going to choose the electronic template. Choose that. Let the instruments load up. The only one I'm going to use out of those is the drummer. Let me make this full screen. Alright, so this is what you're starting with. Right, pretty basic. So I'm going to switch it over to Jasper. He's the drummer that I like. And um, I'm going to drag this out just a little bit. And then I'm going to slide this over a couple of measures because I do want some sounds here in the beginning before the drums kick in. And then I'm also going to copy this track. Okay, so. I don't need this part here. So the reason I did that is I'm going to add um, some reverb that's going to drag the sound out a little bit here as this drum part ends, but I don't want to run the whole track. Alright, I'm also going to split it here. And here. And you can see each time you do that, the drums actually change. These little, these little triangle things represent you know different drums that are happening in the track. So, this obviously looks really complex, and I don't want it to be that complex this early into the thing. I want it to ramp up in, in progression and intensity, so I'm going to go to this fill part here. I'm going to dial it all the way back, and you can see how it simplified it. Alright, and then on this next one, I'm going to dial the fill back a lot. By moving this little circle here that makes it that basically changes the complexity so um, you can experiment a little bit but it's pretty simple to make a decent drum track. Alright and then here just want to be slightly more intense I said I wanted to add some longer reverb to. I'm just going to use the one that's already on the track. Select the bright long verb. Turn the volume up. Extend this out. All right. So we have our drums next thing I'm going to do is add an audio track. Now I've already made this song once, so I already know what loops I'm going to be using, so I don't have to search through each one of these things. The first one being an arpeggio. Just to give you an idea. Okay. This next one is, um, let's see here, it's aggressive stand space. And I'm going to start that here. Actually, I need to create an audio track first. Copy that, make a 
second one. So we're getting there. Um, next one is called Altered State Arpeggio. I forgot to make the auto track. Alright, and this I'm going to split again. copy it and then um, I'm going to go over here and transpose it up one octave just it adds a little bit of intensity or um, yeah just intensity I guess. <laughs> I've already made this song and um, I've already bounced the tracks and made it into an audio file so um, I just wanted to show you how I made that part. Alright so now that the music is done the next step is to record the exhaust sound. Alright so my laptop set up, microphone set up and uh, hopefully no cars come flying by. Alright so as soon as I went to start the car the, the camera shut off for some reason so anyway um, I was able to capture the audio file though. Uh, it sounds like it's muffled, so I may have to do it again tomorrow when the car is cold again. See if it's all muffled. <laughs> it is. I don't know what else to do. Hopefully, it's just maybe the uh, MacBook Pro speakers, so I'll listen to it through headphones later. Alright, so obviously, that didn't work out so well. So, what I ended up doing was using audio from GoPro footage that I'd shot at a different time. Alright, so the next step was to pull my car out in the driveway where there's better lighting and to film certain sections of the car um, as slow as I could, being as steady as I can and looking like a complete idiot in front of my neighbors. Here's why it's really hard to make a video like this with a GoPro. There's no zoom or anything so obviously you can see the camera. And here's one more example. Alright, so I did the best I could with what I had to work with, and so hopefully everything turns out okay. Alright guys, so now we have our music, and we have our video clips, and uh, we can put everything together. So I'm going to use Final Cut Pro. For something as simple as this, you can easily use um, iMovie. And even the, even the music, you could probably just use GarageBand if you're just using the Apple Loops. So anyway, let me make this full screen here. Um, I separate everything into audio, and then my logo, and then video up here in the top right. And so, um, here, that was the, uh, the music for my first intro video, and then here's the... 
So that's the new one. And so um, here is the logo. And then here is all the video clips that I shot to make this intro, which I only used a few of. Most of them were really, really bad. So um, in Final Cut Pro, this part here is called a timeline. And for a project like this that's short, I just make it a, I just generate a black timeline. This way transitions in and out of clips. Um, they look like they're pretty seamless. So instead of just putting the clips in the timeline, I just make this all black and then uh, put the clips on top of it. For, for a regular video, you know, like a, a normal video I would make for YouTube, I wouldn't do it that way. But for something like this, this is the way I'm going to do it. So that allows me to, um, here it starts off black, and then this gray section here um, is a fade into the clip. So you can see it's darker here and then it fades into the clip as it goes along. Um, so I always put the music in first and then obviously match the clips to the music, try to get it to switch at the right times on the beat basically. And so here's a scenario, this section right here. I'll just open that up a little bit. Um, the tachometer goes way up and then it comes back down and I needed it to stay down just a little bit longer so it matched the music the way I wanted it to before it shoots back up a little bit. So in order to do that, I just, when it was at zero, I just took a little snippet of it and then um, copied and pasted it four times just to give me that, that extra time there. So this way it matches the music better. Um, so here's the audio track, the music rather, and then um, this part right here, this other part of audio. Sorry, I'm skimming through this so fast. But this is the exhaust sound. And so, um, like I said, I couldn't record a good exhaust sound through the Yeti microphone, so I just used GoPro footage, and for some reason it worked better. And this little box right here is the section that I actually used for the audio. By the way, the, all that water shooting out of the exhaust is because uh, I just washed the car right before that, so... Um, anyway, that's that, so... When you put everything together and uh, you put your transitions in, your fades and all that kind of stuff, you know, this probably took me about an hour overall. I, I wasn't going to do it in real time because everybody would have turned the channel off. But um, anyway, when you're done with all that, this is what you get. <laughs> Alright guys, hope you like the new intro. I know there's a lot of different ways of making these things. This is just the way that I do it. I know also that there's a lot of people out there that can do a heck of a lot better job than I can. Anyway, thanks for watching and uh, if you're new to the channel, I really appreciate it if you would subscribe and we'll see you next time.